Hello again, YouTube. Truth Man here. So this is Sunday Sermon. We're not going live today. We're just going to upload this sermon. We're going to go from there. Hopefully won't, my phone won't start ringing or anything like that. Uh, it won't be the longest, won't be the shortest. Uh, but we got to get into this particular topic. The topic I'm coming from is found in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. I'm going to read a couple versions of this, and we may go to other scriptures pertaining to this, or I may just quote other scriptures pertaining to this. Listen, man. People be messing each other up all the time. And the, and the way they do it is because you give people access to your heart. Sometimes you got to quit, divorce, dump, leave. You can't just, uh, I'm just going to work it out, man. Oh, man, it's the same everywhere. So you so you letting people pollute your heart. We're going to go to a couple of scriptures uh, pertaining to this. The first version of Proverbs 4 and 23 that I want to read is found in the ESV Bible. It says, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow the springs of life. Remember, I always tell y'all that the whole entire scripture, the most high is talking about farm. Even when he put Adam and Eve in the garden to till it. It's about farming and choices. People, what people try to do is they try to restrict the ability to make the right choices by labeling. Oh, I can't, I, I, you, no horror, so that's a sin. Oh, no playing the lottery, that's a sin. They use labels to as a deflection of them trying to guard their heart, but that's not the way you do it. We're going to talk about this. You do, it's, it's, it's a way that you do this. And it's a way that this is done. So, so ESV again, keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flow springs of life. Remember, seed time and harvest. Remember, he said, if you have faith as small as a grain of mustard, mustard seed, you shall. He basically was saying you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. He said, if you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and do not doubt, but believe in your heart. See, the devil tries to pollute my heart and your heart so that you won't believe. The devil will do stuff like you will, you will get evicted from your apartment and a person that you know is ungodly will go buy a house, a nice house too. But you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart. You shall have no other gods before. Remember this, this what the Messiah dealt with in the wilderness, Matthew chapter 4. The most high uh, allowed, the most high didn't test, the most high left the door for him to be tested. And if you was reading, it said that the angels came after that and ministered to him. He said, it, but if you do not doubt in your heart, nothing is impossible. That's why you got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart from your mama. You got to guard your heart from your daddy. You got to guard your heart from your uncles, aunties, cousins, people you grew up with, people at work. Oh, man, I don't believe in none of that stuff. That's you. And guarding your heart, you have to do it with, with pure heartlessness and cutthroat. You know how people say, I'm heartless. You know what? You trying to run the streets and talk about you heartless. But guess what? If you heartless, that means you can't enter the kingdom. Now, I'm sure it'd be some situation where you have to have that type of attitude and frame of mind. 
But that's what the devil wants. Because remember, the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotion. The heart belongs to the spirit of the living God. And when the spirit of the living God comes into the heart and gives life to the heart and imparts life to the heart. Remember, the heart is, is, is both fleshly and is both spiritual. It's, it's the divine place. So our spirit, man, is like the unfleshly version of us. Everything we have in the flesh, we have in the spirit. And the spirit, uh, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. The spirit is a constant war, a constant battle. And that's why you got to guard your heart. Now, let's go to Bible Hub and let's, let's, let's read some different translations of this. The New International Version says, above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. We're going to go to that scripture where the Messiah said, there is nothing. This Y'all want to know why I do some of the things I do? Because I know how to guard my heart. Ain't, can't nothing come from the outside and corrupt me. Anything I see, I'm supposed to filter. Anything I hear, I'm supposed to filter. What I say, I'm supposed to filter. That's how you guard your heart. That's how you guard. Because guess what? He searches the heart and he tests the mind. The most high will show you, hey man, you, you got to deal with that right there. You got to deal with that. So if you don't guard your heart like 1 John 2 and 15 said, for all that is in the world, if you don't guard your heart, you just going to be a worldly person. You got to guard your heart from the church too, though. You thought I was letting them off the hook? Because they'll have you self-righteous. They'll have you stuff that ain't in the Ten Commandments, ain't in the Torah, and you think that somehow you righteous and you better than somebody else because of what you don't do. That's not even in the scripture, but you have you have uh, vain you have uh, idols in your house. You got you got white Jesus, you got Santa Claus, but you don't drink. You got to guard your heart the right way. I'm telling you, you got to guard your heart from hypocrisy too. You got to guard your heart from self righteousness. You creating your own standard of righteousness. You talking about stuff. That the scripture either does not mention or barely mentions. When the Bible told you plainly that sin is the breaking of the law, not your law, his law. So guess what that means? That means that if it's something that the Torah didn't address, the Ten Commandments didn't address, the greatest two commandments didn't address, then... Guess what? It says, let me read that one again. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. New Living Translation. Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Remember, I just mentioned to you. He said that if you don't doubt, but you believe in your heart. You shall have whatsoever you say. See? Now, if he's reigning on the just as well as the unjust, then that means that sometimes y'all doubtful believing, quote unquote, claiming to believe, gonna have to watch sinners having what you would want. ESV, New Living Translation. Now, here's what the Berean Standard Bible says. Guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow springs of life. Remember, the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is life, eternal life. So, it says, King James Bible, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. 
Keep your heart with all new King James. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of his spring the issues of life. Same thing. New American Standard Bible. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. You see what they saying, right? You see what they saying. Now let's go to some. Let's go to another scripture. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. Look. Four. Okay, this is Matthew 15 and 19. It says, for out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what make a man unclean. But eating with unwashed hands does not make him unclean. That's what he was talking about. He said there's nothing. So, it says, for out of the heart the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks from out of the heart. It says, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, as well as murder, adultery, sexual malice, stealing, false testimony, and slander. When you, these people be out here talking about God know my heart. Yeah, he know you a thief. He know you a murderer. Yeah, he know your heart. I, these is what uh, defiled the man. He told y'all not to kill. Y'all out here killing in Milwaukee, Chicago, Detroit, all over the country. And you talking about God know your heart. He got you. You right, he do. You right. You absolutely right. You messing with other man's wife. Yep. Your heart is a ghetto. It's a landfill. He said these things come from the heart and defile a man. So what he's basically saying is, y'all been taught about this grace, but that's not how grace works. You've been taught wrong. You playing with God. You've been taught wrong because them preachers want your grandmama money. They want your mama money. So they only want to talk about blessing, walk around wiping their head, and they not preaching the, God, the gospel for money. I would rather come up short financially than be one of them. They don't want to talk about hell and repentance. And y'all talk about how good of a preacher is. How is Joe Osteen a good preacher? And he won't even mention this stuff. He's a false preacher. He won't even mention this stuff. Half talking up there, half talking and smiling and stuff. And y'all think he a better preacher than me? Do God agree? <laughs> you think, hey, you think, okay, let me ask you something. I'm not perfect. That's not what I'm saying. But based on my preaching, Based on my authenticity, you think he think he better than me? They already say that dude is a whole different person off camera. I'm the same. So any preacher that's that watch this, watch this. Yes, we're going to talk about money. Yes, we're going to talk about faith. But any preacher that's not telling you right this right here. Remember how he told Peter or, or Peter told him he tried to buy the anointing. He said, your heart is not right. So it ain't no telling how he was living. Ain't no telling how he was living. Nobody would be perfect, but the most high is looking at your heart. He said, this stuff makes you unclean.
Let's go to another scripture. Let's go to the parable of the sower. Watch this. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. We have 15 minutes. I'm going to show you something. And it's crazy because the Most High gave us a lot of freedoms. But pe people, it's like people don't want to be free. They want to be bound to self-righteousness. Ain't none of y'all going to bind me to your self-righteousness. I don't care how good you can preach. Some of these dudes can preach. You ain't going to bind me to your self-righteousness. I'm going to go by the law. I'm going to go by the Torah. I'm going to go by the Ten Commandments. I'm convicted enough by them. I'm not finna put, add your self-righteousness to it. Your do's and don'ts. This based on some preachers from way back in the day that could barely read. They didn't understand how to interpret the scripture. I'm going to go by this right. Watch this. Watch this. I'm finna show you. Let's go to. Hold on. show you parable of the sower y'all giving all y'all money to these wolves and sheep clothing Nobody's book. I want to read it for myself. And make sure you're reading the scriptures for yourself. Don't rely so much on them commentaries. Let the Most High show you this stuff. I'm skipping all the commentaries. It's amazing how I can't even get this scripture without all these other people's commentaries. I gotta, give me a second. They ain't no better than me. They ain't no better than you. I can go right to the most high and learn. Nothing against them. Man, what's up with these commentaries, man? Okay, I'm going to read it from the message Bible. It says, what do you make of this? A farmer planted seed, and as he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel and sprouted quickly, but didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond its wildest dreams. So going to... Let's see, going down some. Man, I gotta. I gotta really. It's like you gotta just. All these commentaries from other people. 
Some of these dudes be racist. They don't deal with black people. I don't want to see that commentary. Hey, hold on, hold on. I gotta get past all these commentary. Nothing from no indifferent preacher who think he better than black people. You 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 can't help me at all. I'm black. What I what I, I mean I'll I'll listen to some stuff, but all these commentaries, some of these dudes be racist. They be fake, man. The prophet is speaking. They be fake. So this, I want to go down to where he explained it. He, he got mad at them because they didn't understand. Verse 11, he said, you've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift, this insight. It hasn't been given to them. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and understanding flow freely. But if there is no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. So don't ever, again, you guard your heart from these people. If you got a call to preach and these people trying to treat you like you was before when you was little, little such and such, they trying to, they trying to judge you by their lack of understanding of how you are and how you conduct yourself. They going by what you did in the past. You got to guard your heart from them too. You don't let them put doubt in your heart that God is speaking through you. Either he's speaking through you or he ain't. They don't control who he speak through. Yeah, but you got to go to seminary. What's seminary going to teach you if, if it's taught by a bunch of arrogant elitists, racists? It ain't going to do you no good. So... Going back to it. It says, but if there is no ready, just any trace of receptivity soon disappear. I stopped. I used to be so aggressive with preaching. I stopped doing that a long time ago. I did because I look at it like this. I ain't hard to find. If the Most High is orchestrating me to water or to plant a seed in somebody's heart, they're going to find me. They're going to find me either on YouTube. They're going to find me when I, when I get back to being out here preaching. I ain't looking for nobody. All I'm going to do is invite, and the people who come is going to get the seed and the water. That's it. I ain't got nothing to prove to myself. I'm not going to act different. I'm going to be myself. You're not finna come in. Yeah, but you the look. I don't want to hear none of your fleshly self-righteous criticism. If you criticize me, may the most high send you to do it. Cause I'm guarding my heart. And y'all, y'all better be guarding your hearts, man. People will steal faith right from you. These atheists, these skeptics out here, man, let them go to hell by themselves. Just cause they don't believe in it, don't mean they can stop from going there. But it says, that's why I tell you stories to create readiness. This is the message about them. To nudge the people toward a welcome awakening in their present state. They can stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen to their blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast repeated all over again. Your in-laws, your relatives, they ain't the first bit of righteous. They do everything. Remember, he said that, that these make a man unclean. They talking about, yeah, but they think because they read the Bible, but the Bible ain't read them. How is you? Well, I said the sinner's prayer back in 1994. You, everything, 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 every sin, every sin, every sin, every sin, every sin. You right there. And you trying to preach to me because you think 
You said the sinner's prayer before I came in. It didn't do you no good. You tried to use the cross of Christ as a shield, but you didn't guard your heart. And that's why you ain't got nothing in your heart. Ain't nothing growing in your heart. It says out of the heart spring the issues of life. It says the springs of life. Y'all talking about y'all saved? Where's the life? I know how I was. I know how I am now. I, I brought you to the church. Yeah, but you did look just just look at the stuff that only you and God know about that you done said and you done did. I don't trust in nobody's salvation. I guard that heart. You know how you box, you put up that block. You gotta guard that stuff from these people. They talking about he a hypocrite. They don't even know spell it. Spell hypocrite without looking it up. You can't listen to these people, man. So, scrolling. Verse 16, but, but you have God bless eyes, eyes to see and God bless ears. Here's the here. A lot of people, prophets and humble believers among them would have given anything to see what you're saying, to hear what you're hearing, but never had the chance. Then he's explaining it right here. He says, study this story of the farmer planting the seed. When anyone hears the news of the kingdom and does not take it in, it just remains on the surface. Hallelujah. Girl, I went to run around the church. You don't take it in. You know why? Because you rely on your big booty. You rely on your booty. You want attention from men. You don't really want that attention from God. You went to church because you knew men was there. The prophet is speaking right now. You ain't got to believe it. You didn't go for God. Man, don't you know, on this side is failure. On this side is regret. It's sorrow. You ain't ready for that. This ain't just, you You always been a center of attention in high school, everything. Everything about you want attention. Now you just brought that life to the church. You ain't guarding your heart. You can leave everything in there. How many of them girls in that church you done smile? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. When anyone hears the news of the kingdom and does not take it in, it just remains on the surface. And so the evil one comes along and plucks it right out of that person's heart. Y'all see that, right? When you hear the word, you reject it because you think you richer than somebody. Because you think you better than somebody. You got that elitist attitude, so can't nobody tell you nothing. Guess what, man? Have fun in hell. Have fun in hell. You think you better than me? You think you can't hear this word from me? Have fun in hell. You ain't taking none of your cars down there with you. You ain't taking none of your clothes down there with you. You think you better than somebody because of what your bank account say. You ain't taking no money from it down there. You better learn how to guard your heart. You better learn how what to keep in your heart and what to let go from your heart. Because guess what? Let's read it again. Let's read it again. Going back down, it says, the evil one comes along and plucks it right out of that person's heart. This is the seed the farmer scatters on the road. Verse 20 and 21, the seed cast in the gravel. This is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm. Praise God, tears coming out. But there is no soil of character. There's no soil of character. And so when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arises, there is nothing to show for it. Listen, man, listen. I done had seven repossessions. I keep getting new cars. I done, I done had a foreclosure. I'm still here talking this. I'm still here living it. So you can say what you want about, oh, he said he'd be jagging. I'm still here. You quit on God a long time ago and you don't do half of this stuff. 
Everybody think they better than me. Everybody think they know matter more than me. But do God agree with you? You done named you done named Fruity Pebbles a prophet. You done named the little racist white guy with the white beard a prophet. You done named the indifferent Latino a prophet. Now you just think you oh, he remind me of Reverend X. Trying to downplay. You are an ah. Anybody, I don't care how long I've known you, if you trying to downplay my faith, what can you say that I've done since I've been over here? You are an op. I don't care if you're a relative. I don't care who you are. If you downplay me and treat me like a joke, you're an op. Because I know how to guard my heart, man. See that fish? See that forearm? I know how to guard it from you. I have no pity towards people like you. People who always want to downplay, downplay, downplay. They push your buttons and then when they get a rise out of you, they want to bring up your faith. That don't work with me, devil. You can send anybody I know. I'm persuaded. My heart is guarded and it's growing. Life is growing. I could go watch 10 horror movies. Not going to affect me at all. It ain't going to change my attitude, my love for God at all. It's funny. It's quite hilarious. The devil done tried everything against me. No, none of it worked. These people, that's how I know a lot of y'all is not going to make it. Y'all can't even drive right. Baselining, you can't even, that's how I know you ain't got this thing right in your heart. You can't even drive peacefully amongst other people. He says, so, and some difficulty arrived, there's nothing to show for it. The most high lets you go through the smallest thing, you quit on them. You quit on them. The seed cast in the weeds is the person who hears the, the kingdom knows, but the weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun, strangle what was heard, nothing come from it. It's all right for you to want nice car, nice clothes, houses to be successful. But look what it's saying again. You the seed cast in the weeds when you lose your faith over what you lose. When you lose your faith over what you lose, now you ready to do everything that you know is wrong because you lost a car, because you lost a house, because maybe you lost a kid, which is devastating. I didn't experience it twice. So now you want to quit. Now you want to get on drugs, you want to open your legs and run up the run up, run up bodies. Let's finish this up. The worries and illusion about getting more and wanting everything under the sun, strangle what was heard, and nothing comes from it. Verse 23: the seed cast on good earth is the person who hears and takes the in the news and then produces a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. So you heard that the Most High would never leave you and forsake you, and that grew in your heart. You heard that he's with you to the end of the age, and that grew in your heart. And then when you start seeing stuff in life because it's actually in you, remember, what you are, that seed is in you. So you can handle the difficulties thrown your way. Your mama die, you don't become no crackhead. Because you got it in here. But anyway, we got a few, I want to go to some of my notes. 
First point, has to be good ground for the right crops to grow. Again, our heart is like a field. It's like a farmer's field. So it has to be good ground. And when you receive, when you receive, you know what? I'm going to have to do a part two on this. I'm going to do a part two on this. Because I want to get into these notes. Part two is going to be shorter. So I want to get into these notes. And I'm going to make sure I get this all the way uploaded. Do not watch part two before you watch this. You got to have a, a bigger and a, a, a longer attention span than that, man. So watch this first part before you watch part two.